ambassadors of care. It's a great pleasure and honor to be invited to speak with you here this afternoon. I have known him for a long time, as he said. I remember when I was at Amasad. At that time, ambassador of care was uh, the, uh, uh, the ambassador in charge of some APEC meeting, meeting, right? I was just started to uh, work on APEC, this is Asia Pacific Equal Cooperation. Myself at Tamasaki University, I was the, the so called of the founder or the founding director of the APEC Study Center at Tamasaki in the, the late 1990s. So we worked together then. And eventually, after he had left his, uh, his responsibility on APEC, somebody else has to go over and I started to work with the Department of uh, Economic Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, for, uh, for much closer uh, in the early part of 2000. Actually, I was representing Thailand as the chairman of the uh, uh, Economic and Technical Cooperation uh, in ADEC uh, for two years, during the year 2000 and 2001. Uh, I think I met Jeremy uh, one in many of the meetings that uh, the the Pacific uh, government took a child of these people. <laughs> okay, uh, that being said, my role has now changed. I have left the university and now working as the uh, commission as commissioner in the so-called the uh, the watchdog for corruption for Thailand. For those of you who are not familiar with this organization, I have written a small paper. Actually, I got that last year during the travel time in Thailand. Uh, you remember last year in May, uh, we had a uh, some uprising of sorts. Uh, I had a time after that to go to Japan to, to lecture on the Thai situation. And people would like to know what is my organization is about. So I, I wrote that piece of paper for this. Uh, in order not to waste uh, your very time, I will not spend time talking about the origin of my organization. I will have to leave it for you to do that at the end of the lecture by looking at the, at, at the, at the short paper yourself. I will jump into kind of part two or second, uh, second chapter of of the whole thing, to tell you why we have a new law, uh, new so-called organic law for the suppression and prevention and suppression of corruption in Thailand. I want to say that in many countries, particularly in developed countries, you don't need to have a separate agency that deal with public corruption like we do here in Thailand. Normally that would be the, op the, the obligation or the duty of the so-called the Attorney General Office or the prosecutor of your justice system. The prosecutor will investigate all the wrongdoing and when they found some wrongdoer, they will manage to sue them in court. That's it. It's simple. But here in in countries like Thailand or in Malaysia or in Indonesia, we found that we need a special people who has specific focus on dealing with corrupt officials. You know, because uh, possibly will be have more time doing like uh, investigating murder or you know uh, cheating the fraud and all that. They have a handful already there. But for behavior of public officials who corrupt or misconduct in office, then they will not be able to give kind of uh, sufficient time for that. That is the main reason why we have a separate unit. But the, the special nature of the, the, the anti-corruption unit that I'm working on here, even, even more, uh, more interesting. Why? Because it is specified in the Constitution that we have this organization. So the, our existence is very special. So special that we do not only have 
uh, the kind of legal backing for our power. Our legal backing comes in the form of what I call, or what we call, organic law. You know, for those of you who, who can speak Thai, organic law is meaning it draw its main source of power from the constitution itself. So by by rank, the organic law would have a kind of a higher rank than the ordinary statute. Alright? So in the law you have constitution number one, organic law number two, statute number three, and then you have decree, and you have uh, regulation, you have a ministerial or announcement, and so on and so forth, down the line like that. So our organic law that support our system is kind of uh, one of the few uh, organic law that prop up organizations such as us. You, you, can, you can say that there are many similar independent organizations according to the Constitution, like the, the, uh, the election, Electoral Commission, that, that another uh, independent uh, co uh, co uh, constitutional independent organization. Uh, you also have um, uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, National Audit Office. Uh, you can have also the um, the the, uh, the prosecutor now is an independent body, but not according to, uh, to the same function as, as us. Uh, to tell, to, to, to make it short, it means that our existence is very unique for, uh, for, for uh, situation like this. We, we don't have this kind of thing in other, uh, other countries like us. It means that we, we can work very independently. We are only accountable to only one organization that that in fact uh, gave us birth, and that is the Senate in the Parliament. Okay, only the Senate. The Senate appointed us, and we have to report to the Senate on, on, on our activity once a year. They can, the Senate can also remove us from office, but the process of removal of commissioner is very elaborate. In the past four years, myself and my colleague have experienced many uh, episodes of attempts by various organizations to remove us from office, to tell you the truth. It's about three or four times already, but this is not the news. <laughs> uh, it is more on political than, than uh, they, they say that our system bothered them, you know, give them uh, difficulties. So, so they want to remove us, so they process to the, 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 the procedure in the, in the constitution. Constitution, but three or four times it comes to nothing because uh, now we are well protected by those who are uh, who are in support of us. Um, so I think in, in the past in the past um, several years that we have been doing our work, uh, I I must say that at least we did do anything badly wrong. We we made. It did something very slowly, and that would be bad enough. But anyway, we didn't commit any, any mistake or any blunders. And I think for that, those who, who are behind us, particularly in the parliament, those lawmakers, they were in full support of us doing a good job on anti-corruption in this country. So they look at the, the current, I mean, the, 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 the first law, which was in it, had been that was in existence since 1999, and they discovered that there are many things in there that need to be adjusted, need to be revised, need to be uh, uh, changed, so that we can do a best job of anti-corruption in this country. So they started to work with us. We not mean we have a we have a colleague. I can name him to you. He actually is the one who worked on our behalf to communicate with the lawmaker for all these over four years of work. And his name is Professor Wichang Ma you know. Uh, he's the one who actually uh, managed to, to draft all this law himself. Of course, with consultation with us. But without the cooperation of the lawmakers in the parliament, I don't think we can, we can have this. 
I need to mention this to you, though. In the past four years, we had four government. Three government, actually. No, no, no. Four government. We had Surya Youth government, <laughs> and that is the, before the constitution came into force. We had Samak government. We had Song Chai government, and then we had Abhishek government. So you come in a post, cannot do anything because it's interim. And the, the condition is being drafted. So nothing that he can do to really help us. So at the end of his regime, the, the condition came, came, came forward. And then we had election, and then we had so Samak government. But you know, Samak was actually, if I could call that, Samak hated our office so much. The, the, first, the first day that he came into power, he said he did recognize our, our uh, existence. Our existence is not accepted by him. And in his power of the head and the head of government, he tried all his care to try to discredit the, the, the working of, of, of our organization. Uh, and that was one of the most painful experiences that I have personally experienced. You know, that, that we are working under a very hostile atmosphere. So not only talking about change the law to keep us more, more power, more way, easy way to do. We can't even deal in a normal routine day with, with the government. For, for example, at that time, we want to organize the so-called the, um, the International Conference on Anti-Corruption, the IACC. We have to make plan ahead about two years. The government has to be our partner. We, we of course, uh, contacted the government under Mr. Smart. But at least he, he could enough, you know, he, he could separate between his personal dislike and his duty as the head of government. When we say that this is the, the role of Thailand as a nation to host this international, international conference, so he need to support us, otherwise we would be uh, look on very back in international uh, eyes, and he, he yielded on that. But instead of instead of uh, you know sending the letter with his own signature, he asked his deputy prime minister to sign it for for him. <laughs> he still had a very 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 astute uh, dislike uh, of our organization. Well, he, in a way. He was actually one of our clients. When you, when you say client, me, someone whom we are investigating for some wrongdoing. <laughs> he was at that time our, our client. <laughs> we are investigating him, you know. Uh, when he was at, before he became Prime Minister, though, when he was the governor of Bangkok, Metropolitan mm -hmm. area, uh, he was involved in some project and somebody complained again, complained against him. So we are looking at it. The case is it, actually it, it, it's not finished yet. But you know, according to Thai law, when somebody died, the case isn't so I think we just just throw it away. So that that is the story. Anyway, so Chai government uh, we we could not do but it was the same in the same party. But when the, the Democrat Kurulisit became the Prime Minister, the, the situation has changed under the eighty degree. It, it, it from you know, the host time become one of that is very friendly, very friendly, you know, from this side or to this side. So because of the kind of uh, the friendly uh, support of the the government uh, under Kumatisse, he he you know kind of uh, push very hard for all politicians. In, 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 in the parliament to try to help making this new law. And I have to say that it is not for him and for the support of the party, the Democratic Party, I don't think this law would be, would be in the law today. Now, it's almost died uh, a few months ago when, when you know, with the talk of whether a good visit will dissolve the parliament uh, when and so on and so on, and whether uh, uh, there will be a a kind of political ranking within the Senate and so on and so on until uh, we won't be able to finish it and send it to the king for signature 
before the dissolution of the House. We beat this only in two weeks. The, this law came into being only 18 of last month. So today, 20 of May, right? It's only one month and two days old, this law. It's so, so, you know, so, so, so good. So, so, optimistic, good opportunity that it, it passed just in time before, before the dissolution. Anyway, so that, that is the story behind it. So, I want, I like to go through this. I, in this new law, uh, this is the, the, the picture of the so-called, the actual, the actual application of the law in a loyal percent. This is a copy of that in Lassie uh, Capital Okay, And uh, this is the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the second law, uh, anti-corruption law. In this, if you read carefully, there will be about at least 40 or 50 changes from the current practices that we are now using uh, in our work. I have, in the past few days, in order to come to keep a lecture and to announce <laughs> some here, organized about 20 salient issues, salient points about this new law that may affect you, either for your interest or for your work. I, I know some of you work in the area that might be very affected by our new law. So I can go through these 20 points uh, within the time that I have in about uh, 20 or half an hour, okay, to, to, to tell you what, according to my own perception, is a change that will uh, kind of uh, improve the way we do our work in anti corruption in this country, okay? Now this is the, it's kind of start the difficulty of, of doing that, all right? It takes four years, as I said here. Uh, let, me, let me tell you this. The new law only gives the source of power for, the, for us to work, to do our work. But in order to, to administer certain sections in the law, we need to have a specific regulation or plans or rules that the people involved have need to follow. We had about probably 20, if I'm not mistaken, 20 regulations that we need to draw up within our organization and announce it to anyone who will be affected to read and follow. At the moment, all these 20 regulations are really feverishly being drafted within our organization, all right? And we, we had 20, 120 days, six months? Uh, 120 days, four months, <laughs> not six months, to, to finish it. And you see how, how, how we have to uh, work up in, in many, many fronts in, uh, in, in, in doing work. But I should inform you that Yesterday, we had our first regulation out, okay? I will tell you later on which regulation is that, all right? <laughs> which is actually to be one of the most important change, according to me anyway, uh, about this new law. I will tell you in a moment. We had that one out yesterday from the board meeting, uh, uh, yesterday at, at our new office, okay? Now, start with the first one. This is, make it, uh, the, the coming to work, make it easier. This, this for, for those of you who are not uh, interested in, in the way we come into our office, you may, you may, don't, you may not have any, any, uh, any uh, suspicion. But I must tell you that before our, our time, my commission is commission number three. Now, Commission Number One was the pioneer one. It, it came up into into being in a very open ways. But I must say to you that once the second, I mean, once the first Commission has done its work, which proven, has proven to be quite effective, quite honest, quite good, 
maybe political power tried to intervene, try to interfere with the way the commission has done its work. Uh, that's all I can say. Otherwise, I would be blamed for, for, you know, for not being fair. It just say that there's an opportunity for political maneuvering in the selection process. Now, the new constitution has changed that. Before the change in the constitution of uh, 2007, there will be a selection committee that select 18 shortlisted candidates. All right? And these 18 shortlisted will be submitted to the Senate to pick up nine from that. Nine from the 18 candidates. It is here there will be a maneuvering in the Senate to pick what nine person from the top listed that the government or the party or what have you that behind the Senate want to have as commissioner for anti-corruption. It has to be, to be the case already. So the new constitution changed that. Now the Senate will not select half of the top listed. There will be a selection committee consisting of five person. You have the Supreme Court President, the, the Constitutional Court President, and the Supreme Court President, the Speaker of the House, and the Leader of the five person. And these five will pick nine members right away. So you, you, can, you can, if you want to interfere, you have to go to the President of the Supreme Court yourself. <laughs> and of course, they are not liable uh, to, for the easy maneuvering anyway. So these five person, will select nine that they want. And these nine will be submitted to the Senate for approval only, not to select again. If you like, say yes, if not, say no. And those who will say no will go back. And if all the five say, my child is perfect, I absolutely support this, it will come right away. The Senate has no power to do anything anymore. Okay? So if this file is very strong. This is a new new organization. It has to not to be we haven't had the opportunity to do it yet because our yeah, the commissioner is still working, all right. But when we have run our our, our time, our tenure, the next one will, will, will be using this type of uh, selection. But this is a, a good selection, it's simplified and it offer little in by way of political interference. And I need to be anyway, all right? We had an additional duty that might be of interest to, to many of you. As a result of the new constitution too, the constitution gave a specific, special power to the so-called the, the three ombudsmen. We had ombudsman here, office of ombudsman who had the duty to, to check the correction behavior of many people, public official and politician. They have the duty to draft the conduct, the so-called ethical conduct of politicians of this country. They have finished that already. And now the conduct of politicians, we have list of that, will be given to us, the NACC. And we have the duty according to section 19 uh, 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 bracket seven uh, to to so called to monitor and assess the ethical conduct of political office holders. We, we we can check them. That is the duty that given to us additional to our own duty. We have not anything yet, but in the future you can see that we the NCC we have a greater role in checking the performance. Not performing in terms of in terms of their duty, but in the ethical behavior of position. This is specified to us by the constitution, and now it is being sanctioned with a new law, section 19, bracket 7 here. Okay, so this is this is a, a, a very interesting new job for us in, in the future. Number three that I can find. A, 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 a good dimension here. I mentioned to you that the NACC, my commission, is a special unit, 
sanctioned by Tunisia as an or international organization. But yet, whenever we finish a case or investigate a case, suppose I want in investigating an ambassador over here, and I found him guilty, okay, I indict him. But I don't have the power to prosecute him in the court yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. I have to send his case to the prosecutor or the attorney general office. Until he agrees that my report is correct, everything is in order, the attorney general office then will prosecute you, uh, so a bachelor, in the later court. But in the recent, in the, in the past few years, I must mention this to you, there seem to be many conflicts between my report that I sent to the, the attorney general office and the investigation, I mean, the, the explanation of the attorney general itself, and it refused to prosecute in the court. We had a conflict very often now. Now, the law is saying that if there is a conflict which is, cannot be solved, then we, the ATC, have the power to directly go to the court ourselves. Very few countries give that power to an organization like this. You know? Of course, if, if, if I am the attorney general office, I would be very, really jealous of that. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, how come I have the power to prosecute people in this country? How come we have ADCC doing that? Uh, this is a direct confrontation to me. And if, I don't know, I can't, I can't uh, 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 know their own feeling. But anyway, we have that power, even in the law, old law. But because of these frequent conflict, unsolved conflict, the new law gave us even a more kind of a, a, a convenient way in which we can go directly to the court by passing. Not, not by passing. You know, when, when we have to send it to the process first. But the process can take very long. And sometimes, you know many cases, we have reached the end of the, 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 the high period of the case. And some uh, uh, wrongdoer has gone off without any prosecution. And that is very bad. Now, the new law says that if you have a conflict and cannot be resolved, the law sanctions us to set up a new, a new unit within our, our own uh, uh, commission that had the duty to engage the filing of the case to the court directly. You think we can do that in a much easier way now? Uh, as before, if we had a conflict with the Attorney General Office, we don't have anyone or any office, any unit in our office to, to handle the, the, suit, the suit in the court. We have to hire somebody else from outside. For instance, we have to hire the, uh, the Association of of trial lawyer. Yeah, each time, each case, we have to hire them and we have to, to spend a lot of money for that. Uh, sometimes we, we, we have to spend one million baht, two million baht per case. That's a lot of money, you know. But now we can do that ourselves, according to this new law. Okay, so this is a new, new, new beginning for us in this way. Personally, if you ask me, we like to do this ourselves, the answer is no. I want, I want the, the attorney general to do the, the prosecution for us. But you know, glowingly, the way we look at the case and the way that the attorney general office look at the case are now different. You know that in the, at the commission, like myself, I'm not a lawyer. I am an economist. And I'm quite sure that in the future, there are many people who work in anti-corruption who will not be lawyer or trained in law only, but from political science, from economic, from sociology, from science even. So that they have a broad picture of what is wrong, what is right. But if you look at legal aspect alone, that is very narrow. And that would explain why. Some case that we say, this guy is wrong, the attorney general office say, he is not wrong because the law cannot reach it. And we have this agreement, okay? So, Eventually, I wish that there will be a, a closer relation in working so that they know the way we work. 
And we still want the prosecutor general, the attorney general, to prosecute in, in the court, not us. This is an additional work that we didn't want to do, but now we can do it if we want to, all right? Number three, this is another change that, that is, is something which, which I found uh, to be of very in, uh, much, of much interest. We have a unit here attached uh, to, I think it's to uh, uh, Ministry of Justice. Uh, it's called Anti-Money uh, anti Laundering Office, AMLO, A-M-L-O. AMLO has a spe specific special power in the special law, special statute, that can, can trace the financial transaction of many suspicious, suspicious person. It can even white tap on, on person for that information. It can get into all the record of financial statement and all that. In fact, even in the, in the last law, if we need something of that nature, we can ask, we can ask the uh, AMLO to provide that, that network. We only have that. But the new law gave that AMLO power to act directly. We don't need to, to, con to consult them anymore. We can use the same power as the, uh, the anti marketing office here with us. But of course, there has, has to be a regulation written first. What kind of thing we can do? We kind of think we can still have to go to the, the Admiral office, thing like that. But to, give, to tell you that this another source of power that the NCC was given under the new organic law, OK? Number five. Again, in the same, in the same section 37, bracket two, we can now, just like in the case that has been uh, a try before, we can have now the power to ask the court to seize or to freeze the asset of suspicious politician or anyone in the country. This is the kind of a major power that uh, normally we don't have this. But we have the experience of uh, the, uh, the so-called Asset Exploration Commission uh, Committee uh, that actually defrauds Mr. Taxi's asset. Now, uh, the ADC now is how to risk a financial transaction and acquisition of assets and dispose of debt and liability in order to confiscate those assets and turn them to the property of the state. This is a new power. Again, regulation needs to be drafted to say what you can do to use this kind of power. All right? This is number five. Number six, well, uh, as a result of this new constitution, you see, one thing I don't like about NACC, my, my own office, the, the duty to investigate the wrongdoing of state officials in this country is too concentrated here. It means that anyone, any public official, who, who draw salary from public budget, any one of, of these persons, if you commit some wrongdoing anywhere in, in this country, only one organization can try you and it can investigate you, it's us. Even the local policemen, they can arrest you, they can, they can co co conduct a, uh, a preliminary uh, uh, the inquiry, you know, but they didn't have any power to indict you. The case had to be sent to us for indictment or further investigation, if necessary. Can you imagine that if Prime Minister has done nothing wrong, well, but if he comes to us, people, his case will be, will be investigated by us. And in fact, Mr. Abisik was under, is one of the clients here at the moment too. <laughs> Uh, this is not unusual, but what unusual, what is unusual is that if a bus conductor, you know, in Bangkok, cheats on, let's say, a